Hi everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jane, I'm the Cornish Knitter and I'm also the owner of Stitches and Cream in Falmouth in Cornwall which is a yarn shop um, and we are based in the UK. Uh, if this is your first time for visiting, welcome. Uh, it's lovely to see some new faces. Do like, do subscribe and please comment. And if you're returning, uh, thank you for watching, thank you for listening and it's great to see you again. Okay, so what have I, what's this video about? Um, this time um, I'm going to be talking about sort of some of the things that I've been working on, traditional sort of knitting vlog, but uh, what I've been working on, uh, what I've finished, what my plans might be, some collaborations that we've been working on, but I'm also going to talk about the Shawl Knit Along, which launches uh, 10th of September. Um, so um, hopefully, uh, your kits will be winging their way out to you tomorrow uh, for those of you that are still waiting so that you should have plenty of time to get them uh, we're waiting for them to arrive in they should arrive any day um, so we will get them out to you as soon as possible and I will give you a little bit more detail later on in the video normally I do a little bit of uh, a travelogue at the end this time um, I've not put that in because I didn't want the video to be too long and the summer's been really busy so um, normal service will resume for the next video. So it's been a busy old summer for us here in Falmouth. Um, uh, a it's holiday season and the kids are on school holidays so a number of people are coming down to visit and visit family and anybody that lives in a sort of holiday sort of destination place will know that suddenly you become hugely popular with family and friends who come and visit. Uh, it's lovely to see everybody, but it doesn't leave you a lot of time for anything else, hence why I've not been on here um, for a little while. Um, but also in Falmouth, we have Fal we've had Falmouth Week, which was a, uh, it's a week that's held every August, and it's basically a sailing sort of regatta, and so lots of people flood into the town to, with their boats and things to, to actually go sailing and compete in, in some of the competitions. And then the week after that was the Tall Ships event. So any of you that are not familiar with that, these are ships with massive rigging and um, the sails, an amazing sight and usually manned by young people. Um, and they do a competition where they sail around parts of the world. And this year it was scheduled, one of the, one of the starts was actually from Falmouth Harbour. We've had it before about 10 years ago, um, but it was scheduled to come back this year. Uh, it was an amazing sort of a few days when all the ships ar arrived and you could see them at night all lit up and there were laser shows and all sorts of things happening. And then on the Friday, uh, there was going to be a parade of sail, which is basically them all sort of setting sail across the harbour to begin their race um, with their sails all aloft and, and everything else. <laughs> but we had a massive storm coming in that Friday afternoon and a decision was made right at the last minute, um, reluctantly, that they had to cancel this parade of sail, as they called it, which was a real shame. Um, and I felt really sorry for the people that were involved because I know there was a lot of planning went into it. So they, the, the ships themselves sailed independently the next day, but where I live, I was lucky enough to be able to watch them getting up and uh, coming out of the harbour, sailing one by one which was a lovely sight. And I had planned to video that for you and, and include it as part of my travel vlog, but uh, best played laid plans and all that. Um, the weather beat us. Um, and ironically, the next day it was beautiful. But I do know sort of parts of Europe have been sort of hit by storms. And I think parts of the US at the moment, Florida and, and places like that in California have been hit by some major storms. So I'm sure you'll understand it was, um, it was, too dangerous for them to set sail with those particularly high masts and sails. So it's such a shame. Uh, my daughter came to visit me from Edinburgh. So I had a week of her company, which was lovely. It was lovely to have some one-to-one -one time with her and to see her and just catch up and not the way you can over sort of telephone or FaceTime. Um, it's just nice to be able to just do some stuff together. I do miss that. I do miss having my daughter and my son around to be able to just sort of say, oh, should we, should we just nip out and have a coffee or go out and have a bite to eat? That doesn't happen um, for me, uh, which, yeah, I miss. I miss. I do sort of appreciate 
how lovely it would be to have have them nearby but yeah they live a long way away so that that doesn't happen for me um but so yeah so that and then um last time i reflected on having my 60th birthday and i'm so glad i did and i left it in because so many of you responded and shared with me your thoughts of both reaching milestone birthdays and your experiences of um going beyond those and how you felt and i think it was it seemed to resonate with a number of people how I felt about turning 60 because I didn't think beforehand it was going to impact me as much as it actually did. And it was just a moment for pause and reflection. So thank you for all your comments. I really appreciated them. And uh, I, I'm glad I, I sort of struck a chord uh, and connected with you over, over turning 60. The next section is off the needles. So what have I been knitting? Um, well, one of the things that, that I'm wearing, I've shown you before. Um, so just to just say what I'm wearing is the Sorrel, uh, Sorrel Solstice by Wool and Pine. Really loved knitting this uh, short sleeve sweater. They do have a long sleeve version. It's, I'm not gonna say an awful lot about it. I talked about it at length in one of the previous videos. Um, but I knitted it in a fade in these two colours from Pixie Yarn. Um, I put the brighter colour at the top and then faded into this colour here, which you can see as I go down. I really like the shape of this. Um, it's not too low. Uh, I don't like things that are too low on me. Um, being bigger busted, I don't like showing cleavage. Just me. Um, I admire people that are comfortable with it I've never been comfortable with it even when I was <laughs> when I was young but so this is the summer solstice no summer sorrel <laughs> something like that <laughs> I will put it below um and yeah it's it's had a lot of wear this summer and I've really enjoyed it so what else have I finished knitting um I seem to have finished lots of things but I don't seem to be able to show you them <laughs> and I know that's quite frustrating and I'm really sorry and I will be able to show you them in time um, but they are for things that are coming up with the shop um, over the next few months and I hope you'll bear with me um, that I can't show you them but one of the things that I have finished that I can show you is a collaboration with a local lady called Nikki um, and I mentioned her last time and I was knitting the Falmouth Harbour hat which is her first pattern release You'll find Nikki at Comfort Road Knits um, on Instagram and on Ravelry. And she is an amazing designer that's worked for some of the top designers in London, creating patterns and knitting up garments for them and garments for TV and film. Um, but now she's decided to branch out and do her own thing. And uh, so the Falmouth Harbour hat, and I'm going to show you three, not one, not two, but three, and I actually have got a fourth, which is the rust one. So three different colorways of this amazing hat. Isn't it gorgeous? Um, so the hat itself is a, I would say it's for a, I would put it as an intermediate, intermediate knitter. Um, because there is a lot of cabling and also the cabling goes right into the crown, as you can see. So uh, you do need to know how to cable and you do need to be sort of quite confident with it and quite confident in following a pattern. But once you've got that cracked, it's, it's a super lovely pattern to do. We've knitted it in several colors and I've got a blue one on my needles at the moment. It's knitted in um, Cumbria from the Fiber Company uh, worsted weight and that's what Yarn Nikki designed it for. I'm going to put it on, but I hate wearing hats, so it's not going to look great. Well, I don't think it will, <laughs> but I'm not a hat wearer myself. Um, but as you can see, it's a, ooh, that's what I hate about hats, summon all your hair around your face. Um, but it's a lovely, lovely design. She's made it sort of fairly floppy at the top so that, that you've got a bit of room to breathe. Uh, and we'll be having kits for it coming up for Christmas um, and in the next few weeks we're going to get kits online uh, if you fancy having a go of it it takes one skein of worsted weight yarn 
about um, 150 meters of yarn, I think is the final thing. But the, the other thing that she's been designing, which hasn't been released yet, but I'm allowed to show you, is a mitten version. So this is the Falmouth Harbour mitt. And she's done an afterthought thumb here, uh, which I really enjoyed. This is super cozy. I blocked these and have got them ready to show you. Now, when I knitted the hat, I had enough of the one skein left over to actually knit one of the mittens. And the second one took about 25 grams of, of the Cumbria. So uh, we will be doing kits with enough yarn for to knit matching hat and mittens as well as doing singular kits for the hats. This pattern for the mittens is not live yet, but watch out for it, it will be soon. Uh, but the hat is live, as I said, Comfort Road Knits. And if you go on and order it before Monday the 4th of September, the end of Monday the 4th of September, Nikki's given a 25% discount if you put in the code Falmouth, all in lowercase. So I'll pop that here, Falmouth. So do go on and give it a try. Give it, show us some love because this is her first pattern and um, we've been really sort of excited about working with her and I've helped to test knit her patterns and, and make sure that they're patterns that knitters will love because she's such an experienced um, designer and knitter herself. She's written them in a way I think that anybody that's a knitter will, will actually love how she's designed them. So that's all my finished objects or things that I've finished working on. One of the um, things that I've been working a lot on that I can show you is my field sweater. I know everybody's been tempted by this pattern. Um, I think it's still in the top five patterns on Ravelry. Um, so I'm gonna hold it up here. As you can see, this design here has this gorgeous sort of wheat um, design sort of built into the yoke. I have to say it's not a TV knit when you're knitting the yoke. I had to concentrate fully um, as I was knitting it. And I think one row, which is this row, which has got the most of these sort of wheat chief grains on, uh, it took me about 40 minutes to knit the one row because you actually achieve this by using a cable needle. So I feel like I've been doing quite a bit of cabling recently with all the hats and mitts and this and, and some socks that I'm knitting as well, which I can't share at the moment. Uh, but oh my goodness, what a lovely pattern. So I have got to the point, I've cast off um, on the rib. I did an, a, a sewn bind off because I do like the way the sewn bind off gives you that lovely, stretchy, but very professional looking edging. And it is a tubular cast on, which again gives you that lovely, lovely sort of professional cast on. I have to say the hats too are tubular cast on so I do like those because I like the, the finish it gives you. So I'm just on to knitting the sleeves. Um, I'm trying to decide whether to do the sleeves as the pattern has them plain or add in a little bit of this sort of wheat grain right near the cuffs before I do the ribbing on the cuffs. Um, as I get to it I'll, I'll decide what I'm going to do but I've knitted this in John Arbor Knit by Numbers and the Knit by Numbers number is I think it's 132 in double knit but I will put that in the notes below so that you know but I think it's 132. We have got a big order of John Arbon knit by numbers coming in at the end of September and I'm really excited to show all the colours because it is beautiful. This is going to be a super warm sweater I have to say so it's not going to be one that I'm going to be wearing in the next month or so, and it'll probably go in the shop as a sample just for one when we get the yarn in to start with. But once the winter comes, I'm looking forward to wearing this one. But really enjoyed knitting that so far. I'm into sort of stocking stitch, which is, as you know, a bit mindless going round and around. Not sure I'm always a fan of just going round and around, but there you go. It's one of the things we have to do. Future plans, uh, what am I thinking of? Um, I'm probably gonna do a separate video which talks about what I'm sort of planning to do next or some of the ideas I've got, because there are so many patterns out there, aren't they? And yeah, I just wanted to know from you guys, 
Are you a capsule wardrobe sort of knitter? Do you look at your wardrobe and think, what am I missing? What do I need to knit this year? Or, you know, do you, do you follow the seasons uh, and the fashion trends and think, what am I going to be seeing? You know, cables, big cables are in this year, I understand. And sort of proper structured jackets or, and knitted dresses, not something that I'm probably going to, going to expose anybody to me in a knitted dress would not be the prettiest of sights at my age but um, they seem to be everywhere this autumn coming up or this fall for you guys in America but yes really interested are you that sort of capsule knitter that really looks at what your wardrobe needs are you influenced by knitting trends and what you're going to see or are you a bit like me and a bit random and easily swayed by the latest pattern and my goodness there's lots of them aren't there every time that i seem to open it up instagram there's another fantastic pattern that's come out that i think oh really we need to knit that one uh, so hence my ravelry favorites uh, standing at about 2000 <laughs> um but yeah I, i'd really love to hear sort of what your knitting sort of ethos is you know are you really sort of quite targeted and focused or are you a bit more like me and sort of sway with the latest sort of pattern um so you end up with lots of ideas and then a bit confused about what actor you're going to knit which anybody that's followed me for a while will know that's my enormous normal mode of operandi <laughs> being a bit confused but one thing i am going to knit is um is i don't know if you've seen the teddy clutch that is made by petite knits i've been seeing a few of those knitted up in like a boucle yarn um, and we have um well we had this we have this one and we have a number of others um by botanical yarns in the shop um and i'm not really knitted very much with boucle yarn before but this pattern seems to lend itself to knitting with that and i've got a number of these um clasps and I'm really looking forward to having a go at the pattern. It looks really simple. It looks like it'll knit up really easily. Um, uh, Mammy and Flory, if you follow them on Instagram, she was the one that put me onto this because we're gonna be having some of her yarn soon. And, and I was chatting to her and she was saying it's a really popular one, but she's put a great video up on YouTube and on Instagram about how you put these bags together because you actually do so in a lining as well to make sure that it's strong enough to hold hold everything so that's next on my needles um some of the other things i've been thinking about because as we transition into autumn here in england uh, and the uk um we haven't got really cold weather but we have got to that point where actually there's a bit of a nip in the air if the sun's not out and um, you start to think about what pieces might you need me saying that i'm not a capsule wardrobe person but I found myself looking in shops at um, certainly vests. A vest seems to be sort of everywhere at the moment. And I've certainly been looking at them and keep, and I have got a few in my wardrobe, but I keep thinking, oh, I really could do with a navy vest. Um, I knitted the ranunculus, as, which I showed you a couple of videos ago. Um, I did knit the ranunculus, which is sort of, and I didn't add the sleeves. So that's sort of there. So I could wear that over a dress. But I knitted size three and I have lost quite a bit of weight for a variety of reasons and it's far too big for me now even though I wanted it oversized it is like too oversized um, and being quite small short and petite um, it it just doesn't look right it looks like I've borrowed somebody else's so my sister snaffled it <laughs> um, it fits her better and she's going to be wearing it so um, I did think actually I do need to knit myself a slip over so and i would like a navy one so navy is calling to me and when i've looked at them in the shops i keep thinking why would you buy one in the shops when you can knit your own one um and i've been looking at just different navy yarns so the ones that have really captured me um what's one of them august slipover by um i've written it down here what did i write by johanna gayrish hopefully I've pronounced that right. I really liked that because it's got the cables, which I said, I seem to be in a cabling moment, but they do seem to be a bit of a thing at the moment, um, which is, I, I like it because it's cut away here um, at the shoulders. It's got some cables on, it's sort of quite on trend. Um, it's knitted up, I think it's knitted in a sport weight, 
um, but I would probably put a fingering weight and a mohair together to create the navy, probably in the same colours as I did with um, my ranunculus, which was a navy mohair with amble in navy, which I really liked. Or, or I love the Scylla slipover, which is a petite knit. I've knitted the baby one or the children's one, which I've shown you before. And I really loved that. And I know it's simple but, and it's, you know, probably lots of people have knitted it, but I do like it. And uh, that's a double knit. And I was looking at different sorts of navy. So the blacker swan that we've got, which is a merino, it's quite a nice dark navy. And I quite liked that. But I also liked this sort of blue from Croft, which I thought would go with jeans and things a little bit more. So slightly more denim-y. Oh, well, we've got loads, but also love that one from Camarose, which is the Llama Tweed. So that's got a bit of a fleck in it, which would knit up to a... And then uh, the Samilla Grosso, although this is sort of more of a worsted weight, it's a very dark navy, probably a bit too dark for what I'm after. For my slip over but yeah so just trying to think about which navy i'm going to choose and which double knit i'm going to use but um that's that's going to be one that i think that i'm going to do um and another one that i quite liked was called the galanta which was by carol feller um and that's a worsted weight and in her pattern i love navy and we do have cumbria in worsted weight in navy uh, but I did love her pattern of it, and she uses a colour that's similar to this, which is what I've knitted one of those um, one of those hats in, actually. So um, I do love that one, and again, I think that's a really universal colour. So I'm, it may be that I knit two of them, um, so two different ones. So yeah, slipovers are calling to me. Um, and the other bit that I'm sort of looking at is a cardigan and, and again, a blue cardigan. I wear navy and I wear blue an awful lot and I know it will go with an awful lot on my wardrobe. So I was thinking of a navy cardigan and um, I quite like the bookish cardigan by, I, I fancy a bit of a challenge with it as well. So it's, because it's, transitionary and a bit of a layering piece. I quite fancied one with sort of some cables and some bobbles and things on. And I looked at the book, bookish cardigan by Annie Lupton, um, which is a really nice cropped with, I love the back. It's got loads of cabling on the back. Again, knitted up in a double knit. Or the Priscilla uh, cardigan, which is knitted in a fingering and mohair or a sport weight yarn. And I'm just checking my notes because the name is one that's not familiar to me. That's Marzena Kolacek um, and again forgive me if I've not got that right but that one's appealing to me um, or I love the horology cardigan by Kate Davis and I do like her patterns um, again it's a double knit it's got some cabling here it's quite fitted um, but I thought that would be quite nice over dresses so I'm looking to do one in sort of a mid blue to a navy one that I'm going to find really useful I also, although it's not got any sort of complexity to it, but I like the construction and the look of it. I also like the Eva cardigan by um, Petite Knits. Um, and that's in a DK, but I like the simplicity of it. I do like a V-neck. Um, I like the fact that it's a bit of a sloppy joe that you could sort of throw on with a pair of jeans. Um, so that one's sort of on my radar, but maybe I'll do a bit more of a transitionary piece first. Um, and probably the other sweater that's really caught my eye at the moment and again one that I'm thinking could be quite a nice knit and it's because the construction's a bit different and cables are having a moment particularly big cables I think you'll see them everywhere in the shops coming up soon um, is the William sweater Willem sweater um, again by uh, Johanna it is Johanna Gerish um, and it's knitted with huge great cables across it but you knit it across the body and it looks like you knit it flat which is quite unusual nowadays as you know and then you join it together but it's it's the construction i think that's partly appealing to me um and that is in a um i think that's in a worsted or aaron it might be in an aaron weight that was like aaron weight and i was thinking i quite liked it in the cream because she's actually got it in the cream 
and a cream jumper is quite useful isn't it but I do like that blue too and I thought that was quite nice and this is the and make Aaron by the fiber company and uh, color Skylar and I'm just looking at the blend so this is Peruvian Highland wool and alpaca um, cream is nice because it's quite universal but blue again um, it's the blue is calling to me a little bit so uh, yeah that's what I'm thinking but I am going to unravel in a um, next weekend so with my other company the Raw Wool Company um, with Anton who owns the Raw Wool Company with me we are we've got a stand at unravel which is a lovely yarn show um, in the southeast of England and there's one in the sort of February time and then there's one in the autumn. And I know that there's a lot, a, a lot of our suppliers who are going to be there. So I get the chance to catch up, pick up some stock and um, see what they've got that's new in. But also um, I am going to have a look out for anything that's sort of a sweater quantity of yarn. I'm, I'm not going to be drawn into buying individual skeins that just appeal to me because I did I did I was very good <laughs> I actually went through my yarn stash last night and had a real good sort out sort of sorted through anything that I've got whips anything that I've actually purchased for a project and put that in a separate sort of place and then looked at all my yarn stash and my goodness I have got so particularly fingering yarn of hand dyed skeins one-offs which are all beautiful but I've got enough. <laughs> so actually, if I buy anything, I think I'm going to buy sweaters quantity of yarn to knit either a cardigan or a sweater to make sure I've got enough for that rather than one off ones, which I've got probably more than a lifetime of knitting <laughs> already stashed away. And I think we're all probably like that. So I'm not going to get drawn um, when I see you next time. Uh, I'll be honest, if I have been drawn by one, then I'll, I will be honest, but I will share with you what I what I buy uh, if I go but I'm actually manning our stall for the Raw Wool Company and we're about to release a few patterns that Anton's been designing um, next week so uh, it's exciting times with that so I'm sure I'll be talking to lots of customers about about the Raw Wool Company and, and what we're doing there. So finally I want to talk about the shawl knit along. Um, so it is coming up really quickly and thank you for s that so many of you purchased the kits that are going to go along with it and so many of you have contacted me to say that you want to join in and I'm really grateful um, that you are trusting me with my first ever knit along. I have set up a Ravelry group um, and it's called the Cornish Knitter Knit Along Cal. Um, so do go and join that group and please use that as a space to share progress, updates, chat with each other, reach out to, to us. Um, Celine, who designed one of the shawls that I'm going to be knitting, which is the Arisimum, she's actually joined the Ravelry group and will be giving some pattern support if people need it. So those of you that are looking to, to knit that one, um, she will actually be on the Ravelry group. So do reach out to her if you're feeling a little bit challenged or confused. I don't think you will, having looked at the pattern. It looks like it's a great pattern to knit. Um, so just, just go on and join the group. If you've not joined one before, join the club because it's my first Ravelry group too. So I'm learning as I go. Um, so the two patterns, as you know, you voted for them on YouTube, were the Arisimum shawl by Celine Fainton, which is a mosaic um, shawl with some uh, lace. It's an asymmetric shawl, which is knitted on the bias. It's a nice big shawl, and we had it in two colourways in our kit. Of course, you can knit it in whatever yarn you want to. And for that, for that shawl, you need basically equal quantities of the three colours. So it's one skein of each of four ply, 400 metres. Um, and I have not oh, I have got both colours. So the colours, uh, and earlier in the video, I said they hadn't arrived. And whilst I was talking to you, a huge great parcel of yarn arrived with all the colours um, for our shawl knit along in them. So those of you that have chosen, um, so this was the aqua one, and this is all dyed up by Shannon at Blue Fern Yarns. A huge thank you to Shannon who really pulled out all the stops and dyed this up in super quick time. Um, so that was the Aqua one and this.
the most popular one which was the monochrome version uh, so many of you have got this in your baskets and these will be winging themselves out to you tomorrow for sure um, so that was that was the first shawl and the other shawl was the Aster by Natasha Hornby uh, there was a cream version with pink which was the original pattern design um, I haven't got that in front of me but those have gone out so if you ordered those you should have already got them um, and the colorway the other colorway that uh, we had for that I'm just looking for it was the blue one and again these are from blue fern yarns um, in these three colors again a popular option so they're all in now so we'll be sending those out tomorrow uh, for that one you needed 900 meters of the main color which on this one is the blue on the other is the cream and then about 100 meters of both of the contrast colors so in your pack you'll have um, enough yarn for your main color and also 250 grams which is more than enough for your contrast color uh, both patterns you need to buy yourself on Ravelry or from direct from the um, designer so do go on and purchase your pattern in readiness to start the knit along is going to run from the 10th of September when I've got a live Ravel uh, YouTube event happening at 7 p.m. British summer time uh, it's a Sunday evening I know it's not going to be suitable for everybody but don't worry I will record it and pop it up on the YouTube channel once we finished it um, so on that one we're just going to start knitting we're going to start so I'm going to talk through the patterns in a little bit more detail um, it's going to be something that you can join in you can ask me some any comments and we'll have a look at trying to to make sure that I respond to any questions that you've got I'm going to be knitting both shawls uh, always one for a challenge so I'm going to be knitting both shawls um, along at the same time so we'll be learning together and um, my idea of a knit along is it's a really sort of collaborative sharing learning space which is um, supports everybody whether you're fairly new to that sort of knitting or whether you're a really experienced knitter I think it will hopefully contain something for everybody and it's about just bringing like-minded people together um, for future ones I am going to look at how I can develop that a little bit more so this is my first attempt at it but I will look at how I can develop the live YouTube and we haven't got you to sign up with emails and things so that we can't do zooms um, but we'll try and make it as participatory as we can and I would ask you to share your images um, and your progress on Instagram and use the hashtag stitches and cream K-A-L um, every time you post something so that we can connect with each other and see how people are doing. I will be uh, giving out random prizes throughout the knit along and they're not going to be for whoever's knitted it the fastest or whoever looks the best. It's going to be sort of randomly picked um, to make sure that people all have the opportunity to participate. So there will be some prizes given out along the way probably yarn related as you could imagine you know we got plenty of yarn to choose from or maybe some knitting accessories but I will announce those and I'm going to try and come on and do a YouTube live every two weeks of the of the knit along and it's going to last for two months so we're going to take it into early December you do not have to finish your shawl by the by the end of the knit along for me it's much more about the taking part the learning the friendships that you build not about actually finishing the, the garment if if that's too fast to pace for you so please don't be put off by the time the scales so i think that's everything i needed to tell you um you do need to be on youtube to catch the live events so do like and subscribe as i said it would be great to hear from you um about what sort of knitter you are as i said earlier whether you're the sort of capsule wardrobe planner type person or whether you're a bit more like me and a bit more scattergun with your approach. Uh, thank you so much for commenting in the past. I will try and get on here a bit quicker next time. Uh, but if I don't see you before, those of you that are joining in the knit along, I will see you on the 10th of September, Sunday evening at seven o'clock British summer time. Thank you. Bye.